I'll choose my own Victory is all that matters. streaks of 10 or more with this one so I wanted to bring it to you guys to show you how it works so this is my slurple fade okay so here's the deck um, I know it looks a little bit different than what I usually build usually I use a lot of two ofs or stuff like that there's a lot of two ofs in the actions but the units there's some three ofs in here just because I want to pull these cards with Mori um, but let's take a look at it. So we have Setsuna, which gives plus one attack and agility to shoot all friendly purple units with slow. We have two Miraculous Awakenings, which gives a friendly unit death, return itself to the EX pocket, and at memory four he also gives death plus two MP, which is good to recycle these units, because especially with destroys and the black meta and everything. We run two of Satia Tower Skylark, and it gives a friendly unit plus two plus two and slow, that's like a buff card. Um, we run 3 Kenshin, um, he's from TOA set, and while on the field he gives all friendly units plus 1 attack damage, and if he hits the hero it's minus, or it's, um, halt 1 enemy for 5 seconds. We run 3 blue Cyclops, um, he has flight and slow. After dealing damage to the enemy hero, give a random friendly purple unit in your hand with a cost of 2 or MP 2 or more, minus 1 MP so it lowers your cost so you can keep cycling units out onto the field. Um, Otani is like the big unit of this deck, he really makes this deck run. Um, he has slow and he has crush, and on attacking he does 2 damage to a random enemy unit and your hero gains life equal to the damage dealt, so you're, as he's attacking he's dealing damage and you're getting health back constantly. Um, we want run fake intel, and that negates an action card with an MP cost less than or equal to the number of units on the field. Um, it's good to stop the higher actions like... Um, curse extraction stuff like that you just have to watch out um, try to use it when the opponent has no MP or in an emergency situation because um, they can destroy a unit on the field and it negates that card basically I run three incense cannons because we want to remove slow um, and it removes slow from a friendly unit with slow and deals five damage split amongst enemy units and your hero gains life equal to the damage dealt so you're always getting five back and a nice little tech with this as long as the unit has slow when you play the card you can keep playing it so you can play it on the same unit three times in an action chain if you need to um, i run two acting in secret i really love this negate card it negates an action card with an mp cost of two or less at memory two it's at three or less and at memory seven also halts a unit for five seconds i like that cycle i run two mitsunes um, it has agility and it gives um, on attacking it's minus one attack to a unit this is really helpful against black decks and now with green ramping up and all the attack they can build up and at memory seven he becomes a three seven and i use it for agility for pressure um, Fallen Angel Mitsunari. Mitsunari has agility and while in your hand or EX pocket if this unit's attack is 4 or lower whenever a friendly unit dies it gains plus 1 attack so he can buff him up to a 5-7 when he comes out and when placed on the field he removes slow from all friendly units which was slow and gives them agility so he swaps it out for agility and they get super buff and you want that to happen with something like Otani because then he's agility with, with crush and that health regen oof. It just rolls. Innocent Desire Lilith, she has Flight and Growth, 3. At level 2, she does 3 damage and you gain health back. At level 3, she does 5 damage and you gain the health back. At level 4, she does 7 damage and you gain that health back, which is really good. This thing is all about recycling health and keeping you in the games longer. Um, 
Beguiling Empress Neven, um, Shield and Spillover. When a unit dies, she gains plus 2 MP, and at memory 4, she does 4 damage to the unit in front and gets that health back as well, which is really, really good. Um, Oshi Lord Date Masamune. She he has shield and growth at 2, and he gains plus 1 attack damage, and then plus 1 attack, and then he gains spillover and combo. So he becomes like this middle lane, like super pressure unit. And we run Mori. I run him at 2. Technically, you can take out one of the other legendaries and run him at 3, but he has spillover, and when play, he takes 2 purple units in your deck with an MP cost of 3 or less. Um, and gives them slow and counter damage plus one and places them onto the field. So then you can then use stuff like Setsuna, Incense Cannon, stuff like that. And then one Brainwash sees control of an enemy unit. So that's the deck, guys. Um, let's go take a look at a couple games and let's have some fun with it. Alright, so this first game is against Envy. So with my opening. I want to reach for like a Mori, um, hoping to swarm to absorb the damage. So that's going to be coming out. 8-2, 8 health units though, and time, so that's good. So I can roll it out, and then I get a 7 health unit, so now I can get some pressure on. And he has to start reacting, and I don't really want to react too much, but he already has this huge damage card right off the bat. So we're just going to wait this out, let him clear the field, which sucks because the Otani could have been really nice and against this anything in this deck. But I pull more so I can field swim again, so I'm just going to wait on that. And we don't want to cheat, like, necessarily give him action to anything else we have to. We don't want to give him that free damage, that free MP. But I'd love more in here because I do want to get some massive damage on the field. I could have not negated and saved that negate for later, but I figured why not. Just that one of these big damage cards, I'll just get rid of it. And luckily I get a good split, I'm able to describe that. This is one of the most frustrating things about the engine. It's, it's literally 20, like 27 actions in 3 minutes. It's just like a pump out like action deck, and it's just annoying, especially against a deck that um, has slow involved. If you know the build removal, the slow removal, it's a, it's a long burn. So here we're just waiting it out. I'm not putting anything on the field. He's uses Crystal Ball, so and if he takes one of my legendary means, I can just steal it and set back technically two copies of him. That's what happens here. He took um copied anything, but I'm gonna steal her. And this is the coolest part about her tech is that she, before the damage proc on her for the action cards, the other deaths that happened basically made her a little bit invincible there. So I'd love her to keep her alive. He negates it, but I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna do an awakening. So that way I can have two minions in my deck. And for every unit to drop, it's gonna get hit for four. And I pulled another Mori for a swarm. And I have a set somewhere so I can eventually do this. Two drops for you, that's an easy clear for me. Like I said, not looking good, huh? We're just gonna wave it out a little bit. He gets the princess drop, and it's gonna basically whip the dungeon, gonna wipe my field no matter what. And of course, he uses Tadas Haze. And I pull him to destroy cards, so I know he's got two units up basically, which would be Leon and Strider. And luckily, I pulled off just in time to destroy that Strider before he can do anything to the board. 
and we're just gonna roll it out. And the next deck is against Terry Bell and Parish, which is probably if not the top, the second best deck this meta, um, just because of the swarm ability and everything like that. Um, and it's destroy capabilities, but I can swarm just as well with this deck, so I search for I don't have to search for more into it there. Um, but I'm gonna start trying to cycle some of these actions out of my hand. And I save the fake until there. I could have used it to keep to keep um Cyclops on the field, but I didn't because I wanna save it for first extraction if I need it. And this puff card makes a lot of sense on Mori, but I use it on Mitsune instead so I can get to clear. Um, I guarantee he was expecting it in the middle lane, but I didn't do that. And I didn't want to drop Nina and Oyster, so I decided to try to steal. And they're going to double destroy, so now they've wasted one of their selfish and one of their destroys already, uh, just to prevent me from getting out of Kuma and this one the field, and so I'm going to take some hits here while I'm charging up even. And I go bottom lane because Gate can build up and destroy, so either Gate is my option. I use the destroy, I guess the outfield. I use the um, Awakening to pull me even back. And I'm gonna probably go top lane again. The Cyclops of the block, bring even down low. And now we're looking pretty good. Because as Nina goes, she's gonna buff up, especially against the black deck. And he's gonna get even buffer and start putting some pressure on him. What I'm doing here is I'm saving up for an autonomy and then to then use my incense. And then use curse attraction. We don't have enough units, so this is gonna get interesting. It's gonna get very hairy. Especially since they have a DWP online. So now I decide I'm gonna save the fake intel because if I can make it to the point of a end game selfish predation, I would like to have two on board. As you can see, this game got out of hand quickly. It's not going for where I had a massive lead to now I'm at a massive disadvantage. And I know a destroy is coming here, so I'm not placing any units on the field. As you can tell, there comes the cool game, and it wipes my board. I had nothing on the board, so it didn't matter. Um, and I dropped Zombie there because it gives it a 2. And that way I can drop Itsune and do a double level up on Lilith. And that's exactly what I do, and I get a good board. But then they use Alexia to basically even us out. And here's where I go, where I negate those selfish predations. But I'm kind of in a bind. I have to use some actions here. I cannot sit on it. So anything like this destroyed is okay with me. Um, but it's one of those things where I had to start cycling actions. I'm going to slight lead and let lane happen at any moment. So I want to continue the pressure. So when Mitsunari is available, I want to be able to drop him. They do, and before I can do the awakening, he erases in with the Puma. And I know I'm gonna take a hit here, but I decided to take it just to get Mori online. And I get him online. And I'm gonna incense to try to stop. Hopefully, get four on the bottom. And I do. Here comes that self predation to try to get the win, and I negate it. He destroys, hoping he has enough time to hit. And as you can see, he almost hit. So very, very close. If he would have hit both of those attacks, he would have won. 
So the next thing is a giant toy that it's against your arm who is the top rank in this meta, so if it's why I'm gonna show it. Um, I decided to keep this hand because Otani can work well against if he drops the opening board of the Jaggy board. And Blue Cyclops can kind of give me some help, and I get lucky I get full tension, so I can do even more damage on the board once I drop tension. And here comes the Jaggy board. But he's gonna seal right off the bat. But I drop another Otani. And so now I can just kind of just let this board do the work. Mm. See, I don't know why they dropped the Jake so early, but... I dropped the Jake the block, and then I have another unit sealed, which is fine. And I'm gonna buff my non-slow one, because I don't want the slow unit to be the issue. But I'm gonna awaken in the slow so I have another Otani later. And when I get away I can remove that slow, but with tension halting I don't really need to. But I decided you're gonna give me the opening, I'm gonna take it. Even if it uses a shield, you burn it, and then you pull burn it come back. And they have a candy. So I got a pull, but they have another comeback. So we're just gonna work through it, and I get another buff card. So here comes the Jaggy Board. I know they don't have any more seals, so it's not like what I got is pretty golden. Um, they usually turn into seals, but I'm just charging up my MP right now. I want him to take out that center lane. And negate the shield. And we're getting buff. We're gonna have a buff slow Atani in the middle. And it should be able to survive some of the mess here. But because it's slow, she's gonna get the, the pierce damage, which is okay. But my destroy hits cannon, which is perfect. I was honestly hoping it would hit Jake, but it hit Cammy. So it works out in the long run. It resets my board at 8, I block with Cyclops. And then he sets him up to get a little bit of a buff. So I've got the Karen. To erase all my hard in progress. I get a destroy. I'm hoping it hits Karen, but it hits Jake, which is fine with me because it's 6 6. And I'm going to use incense to try to remove. I don't really care at this point if Cam gets it because I can start putting my shields and I have crush. Luckily, I take out that cherry. And he drops a Felicia, which I didn't get here. But I'm going to use. Mori to get a good board to get myself kind of protected using that full cycle. The reason I don't need to destroy there is I don't want another unit being recycled in, especially with Jake. And then I buff the middle and I start negating and I start powering up because you gave me all my power up cards back. because I get more of that buff. And of course they pull a Kimmy again. I don't know why I buffed here. I was just kind of thinking too much. And they get a bunch of shields. But I get the halt from the gate, which is perfect. I got really lucky. But 
that Cyclops is going to go to the top for the win. And the last one I'm going to show is against Ouroboros, which is another really strong deck this meta. It's not the strongest of the black, it's probably the third strongest. But this is a really risky plan to play opening, but I said screw it, we're going to do it. So my idea would be to drop Lilith and then drop Masamune um, to get the double level up. To get 7 damage on the field, or 8 damage on the field. And that's exactly what happened, and I hit just in time before it turned into Kushala. Or before it turned into, um, not Kushala, to, um, Sharu Magawa. And I have a good board presence here. I know Cool Game could be a possibility. Um, but he drops Orochi. And thanks to Mitsune, Mitsune, I'm able to keep that attack low. And here's what I mean where you can double attack this. Um, as you can see, I've used incense twice on the same card, and you can do that as long as it has slow when the card is played. Um, I'm going to remove the Magala. So, no help for him. And here's the choice I have to make. Um, I want to keep the up alive because she has flight, is what I really want to do, so I buff her to get above that zone. And if I have to, I can buff her again to keep her alive. I draw three flight units to go, and I remove the halt. Or the slow, I mean, and then that gives me full control, and then there's the surrender. So overall, this deck is super fun. It's different and it's very cerebral you have to think about it you have to manipulate the board using gaining slow removing slow using it's an to remove slow taking advantage of all these counter damage buff um, and things like that and his summoning ability um, but again the deck's super fun i hope you guys all enjoy it and i hope you guys enjoy this last four days of this meta um, because the new card pack comes out on Friday, I think it's Friday. So let's enjoy it, and then let's get into the new set, and let's get into the post-rotation era that everybody's been praying for, and I am so excited for it. Um, so once the new set drops, I'll be coming out with some new decks for you guys. Thank you. Have a good one.